Without further ado, an introduction of tonight's guest speaker, Sam Sao. Sam is a rising young leader at Mason High School with a great passion for public service. This passion started when Sam was a fifth grader at Fernbank Elementary School in Atlanta in 2016. There, he produced a video featuring how technology and a specially designed straw could help eradicate the guinea worm disease, and the video earned high accolades from former President Jimmy Carter and his staff as well, and more than 100 other participants. This valuable experience started Sam's journey to actively participate in public service and to motivate more young people to care about politics. Since then, Sam has played a leading role in many youth empowerment activities and film productions as well, and contributed to the COVID pandemic relief efforts by organizing the Asian American community and beyond. Sam is now the communication officer of the Cincinnati APAPA, marketing coordinator for UCA Youth Council, and a member of Ohio Warren County Democratic Party Central Committee. He was awarded the AAPI Youth Leadership Award at the first AAPI gala organized by Asian American Coalition Ohio and several other Asian organizations. He is a national award winner of Mason's Model United Nations Club, and Sam is now running for the state representative position of District 56 because he strongly believes that the state legislature should represent the voices of the younger generation. He is building a platform based on love, compassion, and unity. His campaign has obtained a lot of support from the youth and local communities as well. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Sam. Yeah, so basically I'm running for District 56 in the Ohio House of Representatives. I'm a 17 year old high schooler that's soon to be a rising senior. You may be asking, how can I run? Because I'm 17 and don't you have to be 25 to run? But that's for Congress, that's for Congress. I wanna clarify, I'm not running for Congress. I'm not running for the US House of Representatives. I'm running for the Ohio House of Representatives. And so our age requirement in our Ohio constitution says you have to be 18 by general election, which I will be. And I turn 18 on October 17th. So my name's already on the ballot. But yeah, I wanted to thank everyone for being here. And so this is my journey and passion for civic engagement and public service. And this is my website. You guys can check it out, samtaohio.com. And yeah. And okay, so this is basically uh, what we're trying to build. We're trying to build a coalition of just Republicans, Democrats, and independents in order to achieve what our state has truly been fulfilled to achieve, which is a which is a state built on compromise. And that's why the logo here is purple to symbolize the mix of red and blue political affiliations within our state. And right now, a lot of people tend to think Ohio is like a gerrymandered, well, it is a red state, but it's a gerrymandered red state. And so I've had people, some of the skeptics say, this is a red state, you can't win. But with all the ongoing news, especially yesterday and in the last few weeks, we have to keep trying and we just have to keep moving the needle. If we just keep pitching candidates to, I, I saw someone raise their hand. Um, I think they might have a question, which we can we save to the end, right, David? Yeah, let me just put that in the chat for anyone who's just. Yeah, okay, going. cool. But we just keep we just have to keep moving the needle forward, and right now our lives are at stake, and they're gonna, you know, with the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, they're gonna go after Obergefell, they're gonna go after Lawrence, they're gonna go after Loving, and so it's important that we not just keep the fight up and go vote in blue states that's and i and yes vote in blue states you can keep those districts but also if you guys live in red states keep the fight up there and we can slowly work towards moving the needle forwards to flipping that to a safer state not necessarily a blue state but a safer state so that's what i mean by your choice your vo your voice your choice which is the slogan here that's basically what our campaign's based on. I decided to run and to get involved in our community because traditionally we are, you know, teenagers are seen as, you know, someone, I, I should be going to parties or I should be, I don't know, drinking, doing drugs. I'm not sure. But, but I think that they're, that's just like a minority of teenagers. And so it's important for especially the youth to get involved at 
a very early age in politics because at the rate that we are going right now, we won't have a future we can wait for to just run for office or get involved politically. The time is now because everything's on the ballot this year. And I know that a lot of candidates always say that democracy is on the line this year, but no, truly this year it is. And so this is my journey of how I got into this whole arena. We candidates call just running a campaign the arena because if you don't have the right set of people with you and just the right set of principles and the best of your hearts, then they're gonna, the people in the arena, the sharks are gonna eat you. So this was my journey, which was the 2016 IB project that David touched upon a bit. And so my friends and I in the fifth grade, we decided to create a video for our IB project to present to our school. And we based it off just the Carter Center's guinea worm eradication program. So what the guinea worm eradication program, for those of you that don't know, it's basically this program that is part of the Carter Center, which is the organization that Jimmy Carter founded post-presidency. And so this organization is dedicated to combating illnesses all across the world, especially in third world countries and just aiding in humanitarian efforts. So they created a, a program called the guinea worm eradication program. And so what that program did was it helped it just alleviate cases of guinea worms and reduce cases from millions in from in the 90s now to like, I believe the cases are in the single digits. So it's real. it's been really effective. And the 20th anniversary of the program was coming up. So what my classmates and I did, we created a video to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the program and promote what guinea worms is and how we can prevent that by using water filtration straws. So it was screened actually at the Carter Center's 20th anniversary meeting, which was really awesome because it actually earned high accolades from President Jimmy Carter himself, as well as some of his staff and prime ministers from the epidemic endemic countries in Africa. Actually, just recently when we started like the campaign, Jimmy Carter sent us a letter and it was super cool. So he national treasure, but this is the video and yeah, it's, it's pretty long, so I'm not going to play it, but you can definitely find it on YouTube, but just what this whole experience had on me in terms of just civic engagement was that I love filmmaking and to be able to combine that with community service is amazing and just seeing the reception and actually this video inspired those same like health ministers from the endemic countries in Africa to inspire their own kids to create a similar PSA promoting awareness about just waterborne diseases such as the guinea worm disease and that was just awesome huh? yeah so this is my adventures in filmmaking I I've just been all over the place and so this was actually my trip to Luxembourg. This is just the thumbnail for it. And I decided to make a vlog about it. I've just been everywhere when it comes to filmmaking. And filmmaking is just one of my greatest passions. So like I said in the previous slide, to be able to combine that with politics is really an amazing thing. And so follow your passion. That's one of the takeaways I want you guys to know from this whole entire presentation. And so... Every time, like, just even in my campaign, we, this filmmaking ability has become really helpful. And for instance, saving costs for our budget, which sometimes is tight. So at the beginning, we edited the launch video and produced launch videos ourselves. And actually, I've personally been producing some videos for the Ohio Candidates Coalition, which I'll talk about later, but super cool, yeah. Oh, next slide, there. Maintaining a positive Chinese identity. As a Chinese American in the United States where we have such a complex racial dynamic where it's more either you're African American or you're white American. And so anyone who's in between really, it's they're kind of omitted from mainstream media and culture, but I'm lucky to have grown up in a household where I speak my language with my parents every single day. And I've been back to China to visit relatives every few years. And I 
read cultural books. I, I read, I watch Chinese films. And so this continues to just reinforce my pride regarding my identity and just realizing that our diversity is our nation's greatest strength is key to also having a good experience while serving the public. Because if you are not confident in yourself, then it's going to be very hard for you to be a public servant. But I've been just, I've just been so lucky to just have the right experiences growing up and just the right set of role models to look up to. And I understand like it's even now we don't have that many role models to look up to in mainstream media and government and just in our culture, like overall in America. But I have to say that being as part of the Generation Z, which were the set of kids born after 2000, or I think it was 1995 actually, but regardless, I've I'm so lucky to have been part of a generation that was raised on more tolerance, more diversity, and more acceptance for one another. And so sometimes I take those things for granted because I know that rep the media, the amount of media representation we have now, it's still not enough, but it was definitely better than a lot of older Chinese Americans or Asian Americans growing up in the 80s or 70s per se. So this is my other experiences that David actually touched upon, uh, touched on a bit in the intro. So this is so the API Leadership Award was my other experience. Basically, I won a leadership award for just my involvement in community service. But if you want to do get involved, if you do, do want to get involved in the community. Don't do it for the monetary value or for the fame. Do it for just the experience of knowing that you served your community well and that you had an impact. And so these things are cool and all, but yeah. This is one of my other experiences. So in Ohio, we have two, we have two senators and one of them is actually a Democrat. So despite our state being more of of red state in the view of the American public, we actually have a Democrat senator that actually is a progressive. And he keeps reaffirming in my mind of how gerrymandered our state is, but also just how, if you stick true to who you are, like I said about sticking true to your identity and being proud of it, then you can make an impact because despite being a Democrat in a red state, he still manages to win the popular vote every single time. And he's won it three times now statewide. And that's insane because you would, to win a senatorial seat, you would have to have a lot of Republicans that are opposite of your party in order to turn out to your side to win the seat. But I remember just in 2018, when actually like his last election was, I, actually saw him at Miami University and I watched him debate Jim Renouncy, who used to be, I believe, our Secretary of State. But Cheryl Brown, he ended up winning, of course, and not the debate, but the race that followed afterwards. And it just stuck, that experience stuck out to me as, as long as you have the right set of principles, no matter what, even if you are on the seemingly losing side on paper, you'll eventually come through. And I think there's pride in being the underdog. For instance, in my district, I'm actually the underdog in my primary because my opponent has a bit of more name recognition, but we've been catching up and the traction that we've been building just on the digital sphere and also in the physical sphere has been tremendously positive. So we'll see about that. Yeah. And so this is, and this was a photo from 2019 of me and Andrew Yang. I know how the Asian community feels about Andrew Yang. And I can say the same, but regardless, he was just seeing someone who looked like you run for office, especially the presidency, because I believe like the last time we had a presidential nominee that was, or not nominee, but candidate that was Asian American was like decades ago. So to see just someone that looked like me run for president and be able to go past this ceiling, it, it had a positive influence on me. And I can imagine that our campaign and I'm, I'm, I'm in like politics for the long haul. So I can imagine that in my case, I'm probably gonna meet a lot more people. And hopefully the dream is to have 
the same amount of positive influences that that's been influenced upon me upon other children in of America and of tomorrow. So this was definitely a memorable night because Every, representation matters that's the truth and it's important that we not just have representation in the government but we also have good kind of representation so we need people that enact good policies stand for good ideas that look like us not just people that are there as token minorities or just people there that just look like us but aren't doing much and or are corrupt etc and so that's why if, as a candidate who is the youngest in Ohio's history running, and also as a candidate who is representing Generation Z and not just Generation Z, I'm not just the son of my parents and my and you know the brother of my Generation Z peers, but also I'm the son of the community and specifically the Asian American community. So I have this responsibility to set the best example forwards for more Generation Z campaigns to come and for more Asian American uh, campaigns to come. So this was my a couple of photos of my visit to Luxembourg and Europe in 2021. So these visits actually broadened my perception of just how much of a bubble we live in in America. And that also helped me with just maintaining a positive identity because in America, we tend to live in this filter bubble where, especially if you've just been watching the news in the past few weeks, you would probably be, you would probably feel really hopeless about this current situation, but there is a world just bigger than the United States and bigger than us. And there are good people everywhere. And just going to Europe and learning about how environmentally conscious they were, allowed me to bring those policies back to America when I came back and filed my candidacy to incorporate sustainability into my campaign. For instance, I'm campaigning on reducing the one-time use of plastic bags and also incentivizing businesses to switch over to reusable bags. Um, I'm also trying to look into policies that add more infrastructure into our community. In the context of my district, we haven't actually had a proper legislator in the past eight years. So he's leaving office this term, at, well, after this term ends, because he's term limited. So it's an open seat and there's two primaries for one for each side for the seat. And so we need change that we can actually see in our communities happen. And that's why we, time and time again, we've had candidates promise, for instance, universal health care or affordable college for everyone. And especially on the federal level where there's more partisan gridlock, they can't get those things done. Not a single person that's running for Congress can single-handedly deliver that. And if, and if you can find someone who, who can single-handedly fulfill those promises, tell me because I, I'd be pretty amazed. But anyways, it's unrealistic. And that's why a lot of people tend to have the perception that my vote doesn't matter or politicians don't fulfill their promises or or my, my involvement in civic engagement means nothing in the overall scheme of things. No, you're wrong. Absolutely wrong. Because your vote, first of all, does matter. Last year, we actually had 18 races that tied in Ohio. 18 races that tied. So any extra voter that sh would have shown up to the ballot and just voted, they would have changed the outcome of the race. But instead, those 18 races, they were decided by a coin flip or the random drawing name of a name from a hat. So you got to have your voice represented at the end of the day, and especially in down ballot races, such as mine, state legislature or county commissioner or school board, you have, you, you have to show up because those down ballot races are where your votes are going to weigh the most at. So anyways, these are my reasons for running. So the pandemic, the 2020 presidential elections and also the anti-Asian hate that has been experienced by a lot of members from the community that I grew up in, it really invoked like a fiery passion inside of me to run because I know that right now with the way that things are going, we won't have a sustainable future. And if we don't have the right legislators nurturing our direction, we I can only see more people that look like that could look like my grandma or my grandpa from this community that I grew up in that can get killed or hurt on the streets and 
it's going to bother me knowing that I could have prevented it. So that's why I decided to put my name on the ballot because I would always think, what if? And I believe that everyone should get involved because of these same reasons, and especially this one. But I'm also running to show that there are role models for the future Asian American youth in government. And that's something that I didn't have as much growing up, even though I had a lot of that in media, but still not enough, obviously. And but thankfully, it's increasingly um, becoming better. But the anti Asian hate was definitely a motivator because anti hate crime acts can only prevent so much, but we need to have the legislators making them represent the people it's affecting. And I know that some Asian American Congress people were involved in making that act, but there should have been more. And also just, we need more people that look like us in government because that sh if, when you have that kind of exposure to government officials and people in authority that can have such a profound influence on people, if when those people lead by a good example and are representing whatever minority culture they're representing, they end up setting a good example and for themselves and just also like a good perception of their community. And that's unfortunately how the racial dynamics in America are operating right now. And so more exposure to positive influences in government from cultures that you might not be normally exposed to, that can shed a lot of ignorance, shed off a lot of ignorance, which can, which if you don't shed off that ignorance, it can later stem into just hatred for this group or that group, which can later turn into hate crimes or worse. And so the pandemic kind of correlates with the anti-Asian hate. And so just seeing the pandemic displace so many people, and I hate using the word unprecedented, but definitely unprecedented for me. I've never experienced something like that. And to see how many families were and that were displaced by it and just because of their economic situation had my family been less uh, less wealthier and had my family not had this or that or this privilege then it could have affected us just as much and so the way that our system currently is working is that people born with less are treated like less and that's not right so i'm running to bring back that kindness and that thoughtfulness to the legislature. And it all actually all starts within our state legislatures. Cause like I said, in the federal government, there's a lot of gridlock. And so, especially in the Senate, when you have filibusters killing off these bills, you can't get anything done. And it's at the state level where a lot of these policies can be implemented. So that's why you have to vote down ballot. That's why you have to vote in every single local election. And also the 2020 presidential elections, speaking of elections, also influenced me and just seeing the negative turmoil and especially what happened with the Capitol attack on January 6th and just the recent January 6th hearings. We need more good conscious legislators in government. Yeah, these are my policies. You can quickly just take a look. Uh, I'll go over each of them briefly. So. In Ohio, we have a Republican trifecta, which means that we have a Supreme Court in Ohio that's controlled by Republicans. We have a governor who's a Republican, and we have a state legislature that is majority Republican. So what this means is that it's a Republican supermajority, so they can pass whatever they want, and there's no accountability. And that's why actually the FBI investigated our state house and deemed it one of the most corrupt in the nation right now, if not the most. And it's because of this super majority, there's no accountability, which is why I'm trying to register as many of my friends to vote as possible in this election cycle. But if the Republican super majority remains, these policies are the most are the are the most timely and needed and realistic that I can pass within my two year term as a freshman representative. And especially this one, because a lot of people in Ohio are calling are calling for more policies such as gun control. And that's something that's very important to me and also mental health investment. And I touched upon infrastructure development, but also I haven't, I don't think I talked about this inclusion of Asian American history in the K to 12 public education curriculum. I wanted to just say that 
again, it's important to have good influences growing up, not just for the Asian American youth, but also for the other non-Asian Americans in our nation growing up, because if they are also exposed to just Asian American culture and just the contributions that our ancestors made in this country, then it can shut off a lot of this ignorance, which I, like I said, it stems into hate and which goes into worse things such as hate crimes. So that's why I'm advocating for the inclusion of Asian American history in the K-12 curriculum. I believe it's Senate Bill 214 that's in our Ohio Senate chamber right now that's actually advocating for the inclusion of Asian American history. And I don't know if the bill is going to be killed in the Senate, but if it is, that's why I'm running to push this in the next um, legislature legislative session. And I'm going to hopefully and I'm going to push for it to pass in the House and hopefully in the Senate as well. And then this is my one of my um, biggest priorities, high tech economic development. A lot of people in our state are leaving our, and it's and they're going off to blue states and other states that aren't as seen as corrupt or crazy as this one. But I, I'd say that it's very important to just stay and keep up the good fight because that's how you ever that's how you you get change done and you benefit the livelihoods of other people. And that's what the basis of civic engagement and public service is in its in of itself. And yeah, these policies, realistic, timely, and that's why I'm only going with so few. So this is a photo I'd like to say of when the campaign really begun. And so what this, photo was, it was from, I think the, it was the first house that I went to to collect signatures to file for candidacy and how the process works. And I assume it works similarly in other states is that for a candidate to file their candidacy, they need this many amount of signatures of this many amount of registered voters. In my case, I had to get at least 50 registered Democrats to be on the ballot. And so I just went around one weekend collecting signatures and I actually only had two days because I made I, I, I made the decision to run just a few days before the deadline. So that was not great and I don't recommend that, but that last minute decision, regardless, I, I still managed to get 89 signatures in two days. So that was amazing. And this was my photo of the first house I went to to collect signatures. So this is the support from family, friends, and voters that we've gotten over the past four months that we filed. And campaigning, it is stressful, but when you enjoy what you are doing, and it applies not just into politics, but also into other areas of life, when you enjoy that hobby or that interest, it doesn't seem like work for you. It's because you're doing what you love. So this this was me and my friends just uh, outside of a gala and th this was my these are my schoolmates from one of my speaking events and this is actually i i believe i think this is covering the screen okay so this is a photo of just this like small excerpt from our first media co coverage it's the cincinnati inquire it, which is pretty local in our state and it, but still it's very big statewide and this is the support from my community. This is actually super cool. I ended up meeting Aptab Purival. This is my second time meeting him. The first time I met him was at this Lunar New Year Gala. And he's been super helpful with just getting the campaign started off the grounds with getting us the right contacts to talk to. And we can ask questions because I'm a first time candidate. Obviously, I'm not going to know much. And, I, and I'm still learning. So this is Aptab Purival, like I said, he's actually the first Asian American mayor in the Midwest. You know how amazing that is? The first Asian American mayor in the Midwest. So he recently became mayor and I see he's such a busy guy, but he always makes time for people. And to see in just someone in a big city like Cincinnati and that city having an Asian American mayor is I can imagine that about just like what the magnitude of influence I can have on the Asian American youth. It's going to be very positive. And I mean, it's already had a positive impact on me. He's, he's an amazing guy. And if you guys ever go to Cincinnati, you probably can see him somewhere. And this is a, a bunch of photos from 
the gala I was at on, on May 14th when I accepted the API leadership award. And this, these are all my friends. Some of them, well, actually most of them are on the campaign. And we are the generation that looks like America. We are the generation that's gonna inherit the current state of affairs in America. And that's why it's important for us to step in now. If you, if you are very like, numerically young or if you have children that are in Generation Z or younger, encourage them to get involved as soon as possible because sooner or later, we're gonna lose a lot more rights than we have lost already as we have seen in the past few days. And also, of course, vote and down ballot voting too. So this is also support from my community continued. This was actually like one of the best moments of my life um, and of this campaign. It's something I'm never gonna forget. This was, I've actually visited an elementary school a while back and to talk about just civic engagement and public service, some, a slide similar to what I'm giving you guys right now, but a bit different. So I explained the three branches of government. I explained how important it is to vote, how, and I, I, I know they're not 18, they, they can't vote yet, but they will be of age soon or not, soon enough, time flies. And anyways, these children, they were so inspired by our campaign and the fact that just anyone can get involved and you don't have to be 18 to get involved. And in, in specifically in the cases of Ohio and a few other states, you can run at a very, very early age. And I remember just being like here and, some, and someone just walked up to me and said, do you think I could be a state representative candidate too? And he was this Asian American kid. And I, to me, I thought, wow, because that's probably what I would have said to a lot of my influences growing up. And I might've shed it. I, I think I shed it like, shed it like a few tears, but I don't know. It was just very, very, very eye-opening. And it was definitely an awesome experience just seeing all these children just ask questions and no, and just ponder about the U.S. government. I'm sure that they will grow up to be really wonderful leaders, as they've already shown me uh, just by being there uh, that day. So this is my activism and communities, community activities. I've given a, quite a few speeches, and these are the ones that managed to be recorded. So this one was after the shooting in Texas just last month. I I and like the um, Ohio Teachers Federation of America, we went to Rob Portman's office to talk about the importance of passing gun legislation that is common sense gun reform. Rob Portman's one of the Republican senators actually that voted in favor re recently of our um, bipartisan gun reform deal. So don't tell me that at your, that civic engagement, that activism, all that does nothing because it does. Because he actually voted yes on that right after the March for Our Lives rallies all across the nation. And I actually helped host one of them um, in Cincinnati a few weeks ago. So protests do work. And if, if what you're doing as a protest is not making the oppressor uncomfortable, then it's not a protest. You have to, you, you have to use your voice and you have to move mountains to get things done. And you can only do that as a collective. So if there is an issue in your community that you feel is is not addressed or can be better solved then gather a group of friends and and just organize and that's just that's the the power of our voice is just tremendous know that and this is another uh, tweet it was actually retweeted by John Cooper he was the finance director of the Biden campaign and of the Obama campaign so Basically, this was after the Roe v. Wade uh, Supreme Court draft leak, and I was at the city council meeting at a local city near me where they passed an abortion ordinance unconstitutionally banning abortion, and it was actually an ordinance passed overnight, so they didn't actually really consult anyone, and so I just spoke here about how the Supreme Court is a majority court appointed by a man who still thinks he's president, and it's not a democratic process. And right now there's a lot of discussions about term limits and just who the, the merits of the people on the Supreme Court and who they are as uh, citizens.
so this is the March for Our Lives rally that I was talking about that I help host. This is me, um, my other friend, um, Sam Lawrence, and this is Brian Flick. So we're all like candidates running in Ohio. And what we're trying to build in Ohio specifically, just beyond our civic engagement for the long run, because this campaign is obviously going to dissolve inevitably after November when we win. But we're here for the long haul to build the coalition of Ohio candidates that are not just Democrats, but also for common sense. And usually those two things correlate to each other, but we're trying to build just a, our own set of candidates from ground up. That's a whole slate that we can run that can purge the corruption from our state house. And so after the campaign, I know I'm going to be one of the people just helping to build that bench up with my friend, Sam. And yeah, so this was our March for Our Lives, which protest in Cincinnati, which actually, like I said earlier, helped to influence Rob Portman to vote yes on the gun reform package in the U.S. Senate. We even like marched to his office outside and protested. So again, don't tell me that activism activism doesn't work. It does. This is more photo. Yeah, these are more photos of the March for Our Lives rally. And so I'm talking to some people here and this is one of the speakers and another, another one of the speakers. And yeah, these are my endorsements that I've had so far. There are definitely more endorsements, but these are the ones that I just like put together quickly that I can name off the top of my head. So this is the ADC, the Asian American Democratic Club, which they were actually the first organization to endorse us before our traction and before we took off on the internet, especially. This is the American Youth for Climate Action um, organization, Run for Something. And yeah. And then this is a graphic from the AADC that, of a webinar that I attended recently. It's super cool. And this is actually the, uh, the tweet that got us our social media explosion. So we actually got 300,000 impressions off this tweet, and this helped us get our first 5,000 followers within 24 hours. So we've, we're now sitting at almost like 20,000 followers on Twitter and we've just been climbing. And so the community has been super nice and welcoming the Democratic Party. It's been very, it's, it's, been, it's been very nice actually. And the tent's always wide and, and open for anyone and everyone. This is again, the tremendous support on social media. Uh, I recently got verified on Twitter where only 360,000 accounts get verified. And so people have actually donated to our campaign off Twitter. Most of our fundraising has been off Twitter and especially for campaigning, a lot of people are not realizing the importance of social media and especially Twitter. Cause I've seen in the past candidates run campaigns and they're more focused on phone calling for money or just door to door knocking, asking for money for the campaign. But also just going on Twitter and talking to the right people on Twitter and just being in the right crowds and promoting your tweets uh, about who you are as a candidate, what values you stand for and the importance of state just legislature races. They help a lot with fundraising. And actually one of my friends, he's almost on, um, he's almost there on his go to $200,000 off Twitter. And all of it, all of it has actually been on Twitter. Like all the money he's fundraised, which is insane. And as a result of just doing the same thing and trying the same strategy, we we're one of the most well-funded non-incumbents in the state. So we have a real shot at this. So yeah, pretty cool. These are the people that we got the attention of. Uh, there's definitely more people out here, but these are just a few people that we've talked with and we follow back and we've just like conversed on Twitter in the DMs uh, or direct messages. This is some candidate for Senate in, I, I believe, Washington. Yeah. And then this is the Ford party. It's a third party. And then this is John Cranley. He's the former mayor of Cincinnati before APTAB. And this is Ruth Gao. She was a candidate for Kentucky Senate. And then this is Casey Weinstein. He's a state representative in Ohio right now. And we've We've been just working together on some projects. And then this is Morgan Harper. She ran for US Senate in Ohio. This is David Pepper. Um, 
I've talked with David a couple of times too. He's helped a lot with just promoting some of our tweets on Twitter. He was a former chair of the Ohio Democratic Party and the son of the former PNG and Disney, Walt Disney chairman CEO. And then this is Nikki Foster. She ran for my seat two cycles ago. And actually, David, Dave, the, when we called David Hogg, so I that was super cool. Actually, David Hogg gave us our also like our initial boost that actually helped with our traction at the very beginning. And David Hogg is actually the founder of March for Our Lives. So it's actually such a small world. And when you get just get involved civically, you meet a lot of people that know someone who knows someone you may know. And so it's just a small world. And if you've heard of the six pedigrees of separation, that concept definitely comes into play a lot here. But it's been super cool just seeing someone that you that's like around your age as an activist on television just talk to you and now you guys talk occasionally. And so David and I have been talking every now and then. It's super cool. And this is the media list of media coverages that we've gotten. So we got a lot of traction off Next Shark, which was super cool because I actually used to read that all the time. And I still do like every now and then. And they're the largest online media outlet for Asian Americans. So if you ever want to like learn about what's happening in within the Asian American circles, or anything that's Asian American related, you can definitely check out Next Shark. They're super underrated and not a lot of people know about them as much as they should. And so we've also gotten some coverage from social media presence, The Post, Fox 19, Channel 5, Cincinnati Inquirer, like I said, and my school newspaper, The Chronicle, and also CNN and, and Associate Press and Scholastic. Those are all stories that haven't been fully released yet, but are underway. So we'll so they're in the process right now, but the coverage is soon. So these are the key messages of my campaign. Regardless if you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, as long as you're for common sense and you can go to sleep at night with just a good conscience, knowing that what you fought for, what you said to the public or just to, you know, in, to the government or in relation to the government is something you can go to bed at night because to um, sleep with a good head on, then we can find some common ground. We can find some common ground if you're if you know what you're fighting for is right in your heart. I may not think it or this person may not think what I'm fighting for is right, but as long as they know that the other person is fighting for something that they believe is right, if that makes sense, then it's very easy to find common ground. And I know that a lot of I've talked with a lot of Republicans just on Twitter and in person um, about finding common ground. And actually, one of my friends told me this memorable story and I still remember it. And this, he was on Twitter and there was this member of the Republican party just right next door to my county. And he, he and my friend started kind of bickering over Twitter and squabbling, but eventually they decided to take the, the drama to the messages, the private messages, and when they started talking, they realized they they had a lot more that they agreed on than they disagreed on. And that's what we need right now, especially on the federal level, because bipartisan is needed to pass a lot of reforms that can save people and it's, it can save kids, especially the younger children, so toddlers. And also it could have saved the kids in Texas if the pa if reform packages were passed earlier. And that's and if it can save just even one life. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to keep talking and reaching across the aisle to find that common ground because these are our children that we're talking about. These are my peers. These are these are these could be your kids. They could they could be your kids friends. And so it's an it's time to just find whatever we can to compromise on and try to see if we can make the most out of it and we can try to save lives. Um, but yeah, that's a very emotional topic for me. Um, but also politicians should be exemplary uh, citizens with moral integrity and honesty. So this goes back into my point where if you walk into politics with a good heart or just civic service or civic activity with a honest and pure heart and good int intentions, and you make sure that you have close friends with you that don't let other people take advantage of you because I know for a fact that in the case for our campaign, I've had organizations approach me and try to manipulate me and or manipulate 
someone on my team to do something that I we don't we don't agree with, and you're going to end up facing a lot of it. I know that when we filed for candidacy, in our within like our first few weeks, we got a mail for, from the NRA offering us like a few thousand dollars if we filled out their questionnaire and they gave up and like we sent it back to Fairfax, Virginia and where, where their headquarters are located, I assume. And if they give it, gave us like an A plus rating or something, but never sell out. And that's what I vowed not to do. I'm not going to sell out to, to these interests and I'm not going to give up on the Asian American community because time and time again, the Asian American politicians that we have in government Norm, normally they're people that have sold out the Asian American community or have denounced their identity and pretend that, for instance, racism within the community and towards the community, I mean, like just doesn't exist. And so we just keep going through these problems again and again within the Asian American community. And we have to combat these, these anti-Asian hate crimes because the legislatures that are supposed to represent us because they look like us too, they are saying those problems don't exist. Uh, that's crazy. And in the Ohio State House, we only have two Asian American legislatures, and only one of them actually has common sense. The other, I don't want to talk about. So I'm running to be the third Asian American legislature in the State House. But in a broader context and time frame, we should all come together to build our community collectively, our and save our planet, our environment, and our people. And that's why I'm making anti-gun violence and protecting women's reproductive rights, especially at the forefront of my campaign. Because I know that even though my district is slightly red, more red than anything else, I know that even a lot of Republicans will want to stop anti-gun violence. And there are definitely gun owners out there that are for common sense. And these are the fights of our lifetimes. And I'm going to keep the fight up. And I hope you guys join me. So reflection of my journey. So I, I want you guys to know that I got to where I am here today and I'm only speaking to you guys here today because of the way I was raised and I was raised to have a positive outlook on life. And also I just had good influences growing up and my parents, they never really pushed me into just a specific category such as oh you have to be a doctor or a lawyer which is something i know that a lot of parents in the asian american community tend to do and there's nothing wrong with that but definitely i i think that having more people just enter humanities from the asian american community is something that actually does a lot of good and not just for the american citizens overall but also for future members of the Asian American collective. So I, I was given the privilege of striving for independence when I was young and I could make my own decisions, which uh, allowed me to discover what I am passionate about. And I'm passionate about public service. I'm passionate about speaking. And although I'm not as good as per se, maybe a Senator or a presidential candidate at this or that, I'm gonna keep learning and I'm gonna keep getting better at it. And that's what, isn't that what life is all about? So especially just having just good family influences. And also I had a really good AP government teacher during my junior year when I filed my candidacy that gave me tons of support. And she actually encouraged me to file and gave me some context to talk with regarding the campaign. And also do not be discouraged by the naysayers. I have a lot of people saying that uh, I'm 17, I should wait my turn, but I've already conveyed how I feel about that. I don't think we have a turn to wait for. And I mean, the people that are in government right now with quote unquote political experience aren't really doing us any favors because we're only in the situation that we are in right now because of these established politicians that are in the pockets and in the, these hands of these big corporations that are buying them out. And it's, it's just insane especially when you consider the experience that I had when the NRA sent me that mail. Like it's not, the, it's really easy apparently just to reach out to these politicians and offer them these monetary values to sell them out for. And it's just absurd, but I'm fortunate to have just so many supportive friends and family members that can just make sure these things don't go over anyone's heads. And also they, they, they keep, 
they keep they they keep me supported and it's nice knowing that i'm in i'm not in this journey alone and so always just make more new friends make more friends and especially when you get involved in civic service you're going to meet a lot of cool people just as i have i've met actually i have the governor candidate for um the democratic party on my phone and i have a couple of state representatives and their contacts on my phone and i've met a lot of them it's super cool just how close everything is so suggestions for parents and future leaders of america so strive for independence find your passion and but also if it's not like public service specific or oriented areas then also I'll commit to voting and all that stuff because that is also how you can get involved and do a duty for your country. But if it's a passion that's outside of public service, pursue it because it it can get you places. And I know that a lot of parents tend to va value more STEM related fields. But like I said, take a look into humanities, have your child just look at what they can do. And we need more people in humanities, especially from the Asian American community, because they're going to influence our culture overall in America, outside the Asian American community. And that's going to have a profound impact on our everyday life. So, and realize that actually the time for running as an Asian American candidate has never been any more perfect, because throughout our whole campaign, the criticism or the only thing holding our campaign back and pushing our campaign forwards is our age. So actually the race thing has been such a benefit because, because of just where I grew up in and this community that I've lived in for so long, the community has had my back and I have their back and I'm not gonna turn against it. So because of just how unique just being a 17 year old Asian American high schooler is we that's what allowed us to get the news coverage that we did. And I'm going to keep representing the Asian American community um, onwards.